Ok. Euh... Uh, so this talk, I'm going to show you the internals of the authentication process in Triton, with, which change it uh, for the next release. So I show you what yesterday what could be done, and now it's how it's working, and how you can use it to create your own authentication uh, method. Uh, so. Before, before the future release, <laughs> uh, we uh, identify the people with or the user with just the login name, and uh, it's a requirement that, that the login name is unique into the system, and this is how we identify the people. So we know uh, at least who the uh, user pretend to be, and we have a second step which is to verify that the, the user who say is him, to be sure that is really him. And uh, for now, we have only one way to, to be sure about that, is to ask him a password. So it's a, a secret that uh, we know about it, and the, we check that the user also know it. Uh, and uh, for the details, of course, we don't store the password in clear text. It's a shit, and uh, uh, and so Triton doesn't know really about the password, but it can check that the user knows the password. Uh, and so, yeah. So the uh, password authentication is uh, a single factor process, a single factor authentication. Uh, it's just check that the user knows something that only him should know. So, uh, and uh, so it's the first level of security in some way. Uh, and we store it on the server. It's this hash it uh, using SH1 or bcrypt. Uh, by default, Triton prefer bcrypt if it's install it because it's uh, it scale better for over time because you can you can increase the complexity of bcrypt uh, as uh, uh, following the improvement of the cpu so uh, that's some way a good uh, a good uh, encryption for for password and of course the password are sa so salted uh, so the salt is about taking some random uh, data that we add to the password uh, before hashing it like that uh, we don't we cannot use what we call uh, rainbow tables where we have uh, hash, a lot of stand, uh, classical password already hashed uh, and because it will create the same hash we can deduce the password but when we add uh, sort it makes it almost impossible to have uh, rainbow tables with all kind of uh, uh, random data so even if the user use a pretty simple password uh, it's different uh, than uh, anywhere uh, where is the, the this password is hashed okay uh, as I said Triton uh, use different hashing methods, uh, and uh, how does it does that? Uh, how do you configure which method to, to use? Uh, it's on the user uh, models. You have a method hash method, which should return the name of the hashing method uh, to use. So you can customize and you can create your own hashing method if you want. Uh, the the way we store it is pretty easy. Uh, and it's customizable because we store just the, as the first uh, we have separator as a uh, dollar uh, symbol and the first part is the hashing methods used and after that you can store your hash and if you need you can add also other uh, values so for SH1 we have to store also the, the, the salt 
because uh, it's not included in the hash. Why uh, bcrypt in, uh, include the, uh, the, the salt inside the hash, and so you can use it back. Uh, and so if you want to in implement another hashing, you can uh, just reuse this syntax and store it on the same uh, columns uh, for each user. And uh, how does it work? Uh, when you create your custom methods, you have just to define two uh, methods on the user. Uh, what the first method is hash underscore the name of your method. Uh, it takes the password and you have to return the hash it part that I just show. Uh, and you have a second method to check. And uh, then you have the clear password from the user and uh, uh, Triton give you also the hash to store it. And so you have to perform the, the checking with the password and the hash and return uh, true if, uh, yeah, you have to return uh, true if it's valid or uh, nothing is if it's not uh, valid or false. Uh, this, is the, this was the old way and it still apply, but we have a new way to uh, customize the authentication. Uh, it's uh, parameterable. So in the Triton D configuration, uh, you can define which methods to use. Uh, and it's a comma separated list. So Triton will try the first one. And if it cannot authenticate the user with the first one, it will go to the next one and so on until you find one way to authenticate the user or if it's not possible, the user will be kept aware of the of Triton. So yeah, that's what I just said. Uh, and how this process works? Uh, you, if you want to define your own authentication methods, you have to create, define on the user uh, object a login method with the name of your authentication, uh, authentication method. And this method takes the login of the user, which is the only required uh, parameters to identify the user, and uh, uh, parameters, which is a dictionary of all the inputs the user give it, give it, give it to you uh, from the interface. Uh, and then you process, process the authentication. You try to authenticate the, use, the user uh, with those parameters. Uh, and if you don't have enough parameters and you need to ask, for example, for the password, you need to ask the password to the user because the first call is you get the login and no parameters. Uh, you just have to raise an exception, which is the login exception. And this exception take the name. It's the name of the parameters you are asking. Uh, a message to show to the user, uh, please uh, fill the password, something like that. And you have a type, which is the inputs you are expecting from the user. And it could, for now, it could be a password, so it will be hidden for when you type, or just a, a sharp uh, text box uh, where you see what is what the is uh, typing. Uh, and so the client understand this exception and manage it with pop-ups and asking uh, the inputs of the user. When the method uh, succeed, it should return the user ID. Uh, and to return the user ID, you should use this method, get login, uh, because there is cache with it, and so you don't have to always query the database to find the login and the user ID. So it's better to use the get login uh, methods. And if it doesn't succeed, you just have to return false or none, or we don't care. Uh, something that is evaluated in Python as false. Uh, and then Triton will go to the next authentication method, but keeping all the parameters already uh, filled. Uh, yeah, that's that's where we can uh, uh, you can have 
multiple authentication uh, combines. So if you want to ask a password and an SMS, uh, if you ask for the password, it will be kept for all other uh, tented, uh, tries uh, by each method. Uh, for now in Triton, we have few methods, authentication methods. Uh, so we have in base the password method, which is the standard one, and the one that is activated by default. Uh, it's one, only one factor authentication uh, based on what you know. We have the L LDAP, LDAP uh, authentication, so it's connect to a L LDAP server and uh, try to authenticate on this LDAP server. And it's still just about password, so it's again just uh, one uh, factor authentication with uh, SMS, so it's text message uh, that is sent to the uh, phone of the user. And this is, again, only one factor authentication, but instead of be being based on something, something the user knows, uh, it's based on something the user own, his phone. Uh, so it's a different kind of authentication. And we have the password SMS authentication, which combine indeed the, the password and the SMS authentication together. Uh, and so it will ask something the user know, the password, and something the user own, the, his phone. And so it's two-factor authentication. So it's more secure, normally. Uh, for the LDAP authentication, the modules just require the URL for uh, the LDAP uh, to connect, and uh, the name of the field which contains the user uh, in notification, the UID. Uh, this is pretty standard for uh, LDAP, LDAP. Uh, the SMS modules uh, require in the configuration that you define the methods to send the SMS. Uh, there is plenty of uh, services that provide you to uh, feature to send SMS to any number. Uh, there is no standard API, so the way we implement it is just that you have to define the methods somewhere. Uh, it should be a, a fully qualified uh, methods name, uh, and Triton will import it automatically. And uh, the method should, is, should have this API, so it just take uh, the text that will be sent. So for uh, the, this module, it will be the, the code. Uh, the number, the, so the two is the, the phone number uh, to which you send the message, and the from number for uh, if you need one, uh, which will be the number from which uh, the phone sending the message. Uh, and you can define uh, the, the configuration, the from number, because normally it should be always the same. Maybe it's your account on the uh, service uh, provider. Uh, you can define the length, the, the length of uh, the text code. So I think by default it's four characters, random character, char. Uh, but you can ask to get uh, bigger uh, and this way, it prevents, it makes it more harder to guess by uh, someone else. And you have uh, a time to leave. So it's how much time the code you have sent by uh, text message will be valid to authenticate. Uh, by default, I think it's five minutes. Uh, and after that, this code is no more uh, usable for to authenticate. So if for some reason uh, someone uh, didn't plug in, it's uh, done. And once the user used the, the, the code for, to authenticate, uh, the code cannot be reused a second time. So it's the uh, one, uh, one usage. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Triton, we have uh, uh, some uh, techniques to prevent, to enforce security, and uh, a common way to uh, 
to enter to crack the, the system is to try uh, any kind of uh, authentication. So tried uh, many times of uh, the, the password or, or, uh, or the SMS code and so on. So the idea is that you get the, uh, the attacker uh, try to many password uh, very quickly uh, to try to guess one and to find what that is working. Uh, and with the kind of uh, CPU we have now, it could try a lot of password very quickly. So we have to protect against that. And uh, what Triton does is it counts the number of try to log in for a, a specific login name. It count uh, each try and he store that count and each, he, it sleeps uh, on each login tentative uh, the, uh, specific, a specific amount of seconds which depend on the num num number of try of login. So this means uh, each time you try and you fail with, because you are trying with the wrong password uh, Triton will answer you uh, later and, it, it, and the, the time is waiting before answering increase exponentially so uh, quickly you will start to have to wait for five or ten minutes before being able to try another uh, wrong password and so that's prevent the, the, the hackers to, to try to, to break because he will have to wait very long before uh, having an answer and know if the password he's trying is a uh, succeed password or not. And uh, yeah, that's the last uh, slide. <laughs> so. Okay, question. Ah. Oh, my dear friend, Cedric, hello. Yeah. Um, I think we already discussed this thing with the brute force attack, and uh, uh, I actually put some notes um, which were kind of uh, kindly ignored, I would say. But... Uh, I, I don't agree at all with this thing. I know that Schneier wrote something about that, which from probably a theoretical point of view, it can make sense, but from a practical point of view, it doesn't make sense at all. Um, plus the implementation had some issues because it was recording the attempts yeah. in, in the cache and then we sent something that it was breaking the system and so on. Um, the way I see it, and actually that work, uh, or, or work, or, or was implemented for this current thing, for these current versions of what? Triton D. Uh, the, the waiting? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's been there for a it's, while. Yeah. But for example, on the uh, database server, you know, when you create something, I know that you are getting rid of it now, it doesn't really do that at all. It just works for logging attempts for the current database. And I think it, it would have been a much better approach to get rid of that and probably have something like um, we use um, in order to check for bad passwords and things like that, you know, to, to enforce um, good password things because today we have something like you can put hello and, and you get in. Uh, and also it doesn't check for new creation of a database or for database removal or, or things like that. So all in all, I think that those type of things of making, you know, two to the end or whatever, uh, it doesn't really make a safer environment. On the contrary, the proof of concept that we sent was that actually was bad in terms of performance and, instead, and it, it actually corrupted the cache at some point. So 
on, um, on a LC system, it doesn't prevent, uh, make it bad or about performance. Of course, a system when it is under attack, and uh, in any way, there is a penalty on the on the system. Uh, it's an attack. You cannot. There is no <laughs> magical sh shield that prevents any uh, anything to happen to the system. So. Uh, this is a way to protect the data. This is not a way to protect the system for against brute, uh, uh, what we called uh, DDoS, uh, denied uh, of services, uh, because it's out. It should uh, this kind of protection against DDoS should happen outside the system. It's. Uh, if it's in already in the system, it's too late because the, the attack is about break, uh, pre, uh, getting into the system or uh, reaching the border of the system. And so if you try to protect from behind, it's, it's too late. You have to protect uh, from outside. And DDoS should be uh, managed at uh, a lower level, at the network level. And that's out, I think, outside of the scope of the Triton, which is just an application for, uh, software and not uh, a full uh, uh, OSIN platform or whatever. So but I don't think it's, and uh, also we need this, I added to the talk, because uh, as we have other authentication methods like SMS or or whatever, uh, it's no more about just protecting the password guessing, but also any kind of authentication and any kind of other system that are used. So, uh, so I don't. I think it's important to keep it because for SMS, if you get, uh, you just use an SMS with a line of uh, four character. It's pretty quick. You can pretty easily try all the all the possible of all the possibilities, and uh, we should delay prevent to get uh, this time. And uh, the time your code should stay uh, available, activable. Uh, you should give some time to the user to read the the phone and the type. And in this lapse of time. Uh, and that, uh, an hacker could try all the all the possibilities. So I think it's it's important to keep to get that and to keep it. And in some way, it doesn't really hurt. I think that actually pieces off the user um, because you know that two to the end. It's when when you are already on the third uh, approach. You have to wait whatever, eight seconds or whatever. Yeah. Well, you have a minus one there, but it still pisses you off. And it doesn't really prevent, on the contrary, by having that and by having that internal user it, logging yeah, attempt. As I said, it doesn't prevent denied of service. It's not about the, uh, you, and there is no. Uh, but not only it doesn't prevent, it creates. No a DDoS scenario mm. by having by that. We did it. We, yeah. we, and we did the but proof it's of not, concept. It's not a, uh, but if you don't have that. it, if you don't have that Zebrick, if you don't have that, it's like, a, think about SSH. Think about another type of server. You don't put those type of things. If you have a wrong password, okay, you're out. And at some point in time, it can close the session. But by having that, what you are doing is creating this scenario to make a DDoS uh, attack. I think it's okay, I, I think we've heard all the discussion about this specific issues <laughs> because we discussed it lengthily into the bug tracker and uh, the consensus has been to keep this for reasons that are the reasons that have been stated. The bug is now public, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's very public. Ah, yes, of course. I didn't put it on. No, 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 no. It's the custom. We have a security issue. We discuss in private, and once the issue is resolved, it can become public. 
And there is a patch for whoever wants to put it. And there is a patch, indeed, if you believe <laughs> what Luis says, and a patch if you don't believe. Well, uh, from my experience, of course, the DDoS is uh, something which is uh, related to the host and not to the application. But nevertheless, uh, I take a point from uh, what uh, Louis suggested. It is to implement the capability to enforce a policy about uh, a password. Um, to prevent, you. is it possible to prevent users to put uh, one, two, three, four, five as a password? Th uh, this is a this is a okay. key a key point for a lot of uh, organizations. Or the no. alternative is to is to uh, build the, the password and transfer it to the to the user. But <clears throat> you know, the admin admin is something which makes a, a lot of, uh, of damage. Indeed, uh, there is a lot of literature about that uh, in the security uh, uh, area. And uh, I, I think there are kind of, or at least a movement that try to say uh, it's not possible to enforce the user to create a good password. Uh, everybody knows about the rules to make it, to cr use a, to create a good password, but most of the people don't do it. And there is uh, a lot of literature about that, and it's uh, a kind of uh, strange things about the human behavior. Uh, and I think the way to solve it is to use two. Fact, authentication factor or three authentication factor because you have also the three authentication factor because it's something you know, something you have, and uh, the last one is something you are. Something yeah, something you are. So a fingerprint or something like that. Uh, this enforce and this pre if you use Triton with the password SMS, you are uh, in better. Uh, you protect better your uh, user, uh, even if they put a fa uh, very weak password. Uh, there is still it's still harder to what? You have an alternative, but it doesn't uh, answer the point. Yeah, but uh, you can. The, the, the problem is that, for example, I have several thousand servers. Sometimes when the customer says, well, uh, your password doesn't work, and so on and so on, of course I have uh, tens of such requests every week. Y up to now, it was always the fact that the, the user had difficulties to type a password. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what I do when I get this kind of, uh, of claim, is I try three or four passwords on his account. And one time uh, uh, over 10, I enter the system. I try one, two, three, four, five. I try admin. I try, and, and that's it. Yes. <clears throat> and it makes in danger every everything uh, we can do uh, uh, about security. So I stop the server and I explain to the customer that he signed the contract on which he committed on um, building a strong password. Okay, and he has to to to, to change the, the the point. If it would said it would save a lot of time for to, to someone like me, if I could just enforce the number, the variety of basic passwords. But indeed, what happens? Yeah, yeah. Of course, you can enforce if you want. It's pretty easy to, to get. Uh, uh, when the user creates, write the password. You can. You have the, the uh, clear text password there, and you can make some check and, and so on. But often, those libraries that try to evaluate the strength of a password, they are, most of the time, they are not so good. Uh, for example, I use uh, a password manager, and I generate a password for each services. And it's something I cannot remember, because it's 26 character, random character, and so on. And when I put on some services that have a small toolbar that say the password is yes. correct or not, the, many times I have, you have a weak password, you should improve it. And it is a random data uh, of uh, 26 lines, and for them it's not a good password. 
that's, uh, I think it's, there is no rule about, exact rule about what is a good password. And uh, I don't think you will address it by requesting to the user to change the password or to construct a new password because they will always find a way to build a weak password that pass your rules. Mm -hmm. And they will change just a little bit things and that doesn't help at all, except that they are, the, the, your user are a little bit pissed off because they cannot use what they want and they will just <laughs> it, 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 try to find a, a way to, to get uh, what they want exactly, and instead of one, two, three, they will use uh, three, two, one, or <laughs> whatever, and uh, changing a little bit and break the rules. So. Unfortunately, we run out of time. We already had 20 <laughs> minutes of the talk and 10 minutes for the discussion. Um, uh, <laughs> is your presentation uh, at the end, or is there any, oh, any, any slide left? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, do you want to discuss uh, five minutes longer? No, thanks. About the second. <laughs> I got just okay. one more question. It's possible? Okay. No? Uh, okay. Last question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just wondering when uh, you're yeah. using two factor authentication yeah. and uh, you come back from hibernation from the, the client and uh, it uses the same uh, authentication to. Uh, yeah, uh, when you. Session. The session, you, you, you let uh, your session and you go back from hibernation and uh, it asks for password. Yeah. Did you use the same method, of SMS and uh, yeah, password? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So when the session expires, uh, indeed it's a new login you are doing. So you get a new session and you go to the exactly the same process. And do you think about a trusted computer uh, to not to ask always SMS uh, each time? Uh, 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 <laughs> I think in this case, uh, if you implement uh, authentication with SMS, uh, in some way you can increase the length of your session to prevent the user to, to have to re to relog again. But uh, the session uh, lasts as far as the user is using the system. The, the session will not expire. So. Uh, it will expire because he stopped doing work. So I think for now it's five minutes, but you could probably increase to 15 or, or even a little bit more. And I don't think it's, yeah. But I think the question was not require SMS to feature logging so that Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the met, yeah. The methods, uh, uh, the current design doesn't allow that because uh, the login process is exactly the same and there is no difference. Maybe we could uh, put the old session somewhere and then uh, we could put the old session as a parameter and then uh, the SMS uh, authentication methods, we check I have a, an old session so I don't request the SMS and I validate uh, just with the password. And that's maybe uh, an improvement that we 